Now at 5 a.m., this is WKYT This Morning. Violent protests break out in Charlotte, North Carolina overnight following a deadly officer-involved shooting. We're learning more about the shooting death of a pregnant Lexington woman. New details just ahead. And a fallen Estill County firefighter is being honored in a big way. Find out how and your weather forecast just ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Rise and shine. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for starting your day with us. I'm Andrea Walker. I'm Bill Bryant. It sure is good to have you with us on WKYT. Wednesday, middle of the week, hump day, September 21st. That means tomorrow it's fall. The first day of fall. <laughs> it will be official, but it certainly won't feel that That's way. That's right. It's going to be hot. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yeah, some are saying, yeah, I'm not leaving just yet because we're going to see those temperatures right around 90 degrees by the afternoon, not only today, but on your first day of fall and also on Friday, too, before that blasting cold front comes rolling on through. There's your look outside, upper 50s, lower 60s. Exactly what you felt yesterday morning is what you're going to feel this morning, and exactly what you saw and felt yesterday afternoon, basically what you're going to see today. So they're, they're pretty much twins of each other, and things aren't changing that much. But what we're really focusing in on, those changes there for the weekend. So it's very, very quiet. The next few days is going to be pretty warm. And then that weekend, that blasting cold front is going to come on through here. When do we see that cold air rush on in? And also, do we see any rain out of that? I'm going to have those answers coming up. All right, we'll see you in a bit. In the news here on WKYT, angry street protests have erupted in Charlotte, North Carolina overnight following an officer-involved shooting of an armed black man at an apartment complex. Now city officials are calling for calm this morning. Michelle Chamberlain is at the alert desk with details and overnight developments. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, overnight. Demonstrators knelt down with their hands up along a Charlotte roadway, steps away from officers in riot gear. But that moment of peace was brief. Here's an aerial look. 12 officers were injured during last night's protest. Police fired tear gas into the crowd. Some protesters kicked the canisters back. Some of the protesters even throwing rocks, water bottles, damaging police cars. One officer was hit in the face with a rock. Now, all of this taking place hours after Keith Scott was shot and killed by police at an apartment complex. Officers were there looking for a suspect with an outstanding warrant when they saw the 43 year old getting out of his car. Now, police say he was armed. His family says he was shot by officers while reading a book inside his car. Detectives recovered a firearm at the scene. Now, the officer involved has been identified as Brentley Benson, an African American on the force since 2014. He has been placed on administrative leave. Now, authorities say they're interviewing witnesses as part of their investigation. The incident comes as the Justice Department investigates the officer involved shooting of Terrence Crutcher in Tulsa, Oklahoma last week. Dash cam video showed Crutcher had his hands in the air before he was shot and killed. Guys, back to you. All right, more to be learned on this as the morning goes along. Thank you very much, Michelle. Police have released more details about the shooting death of a pregnant Lexington woman. Mariah Coleman was shot while walking her dog nearly two weeks ago in the Winburn neighborhood in Lexington. Police say Coleman and her unborn baby died at the hospital shortly after. WKYT's Lauren Miner joins us live with more details and new details surrounding the case. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, Bill and Andrea. Well, new information in the shooting that killed Mariah Coleman and her unborn baby is giving the family hope that an arrest will be made soon. Police said that Coleman was an innocent bystander when she was shot while out walking her dog two weeks ago. Police say they were still they are still trying to figure out who is responsible for the shooting. They did discover a gun near the scene, which has been sent off for testing to determine whether or not it is related to this case. Witnesses told police that shortly after the shooting, there was a young man with dreadlocks and a cast on his arm running from the scene. With this new information being released, the Coleman family hopes to find the man responsible for Mariah's death. The mother deserves to know whether it was an accident, whether it was on purpose. The mother deserves to know. Now, police have not named any suspects in this case, but they are asking with any, for anyone with any information to please come forward. Reporting live in Lexington, Lauren Miner, WKYT.
Lauren, thank you. New on WKYT this morning, a Lexington police cruiser was involved in a late night hit and run. That happened about 1130 in front of the Dairy Queen on New Circle Road near Russell Cave Road. Police say an officer was checking on a flat tire when another car backed into his cruiser. They say the driver then took off. Police did not chase the driver. They did locate the vehicle, which was reported stolen shortly after that on Martin Court. Police say the officer was not injured. Well, U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch spoke to those on the front lines of the fight against opioid and heroin abuse during her visit to central Kentucky. We are focusing our enforcement efforts on this problem because we have to stop the pipeline of poison into our communities. During her speech at the University of Kentucky, Lynch called the health crisis a national epidemic. Lynch said there isn't just one way to combat the issue. Instead, it will take increased enforcement, prevention, and treatment efforts. Lexington's police chief also spoke during the panel discussion, saying his department has now assigned two more detectives dedicated solely to heroin cases. We have to have a holistic approach. There has to be an educational component for children. They have to be aware of really what's happening. This, if you think about it, in the last four years, this has hit us pretty quick. Kentucky is one of the top five deadliest states for heroin. Lynch says 1,200 Kentuckians died from drug overdoses in 2015, a nearly 15 percent increase from the year before. And before speaking at UK, Attorney General Lynch spoke at Madison Central High School in Richmond about the dangers of addiction. 600 students from Madison Central, Madison Southern, and Richmond Model attended the discussion. There have been 30 overdose deaths so far this year in Madison County. Well, people living along a busy stretch of highway in Scott County are calling for changes after a deadly crash. The crash happened Friday on U.S. 25 north of Georgetown near Moon Lake Estates. Police say a woman died after her car collided with two garbage trucks. Neighbors say the road is too small for the big trucks and close calls are a daily occurrence. The worst part is coming around the curves because you never know. I mean, I've almost been hit I don't know how many times. The sheriff says he plans to talk to the mayor and judge executive about the road concerns. It's a state road, so any changes to speed limits or expansion would have to go through Frankfurt first. A man accused of trying to scam Lexington businesses out of money is in jail this morning. Police arrested Kenneth Roth on theft charges unrelated to the scam. They say he recently went to several businesses in town and told them he was collecting money for various charities, including the United Way of the Bluegrass. However, police don't think Roth received any money from his soliciting. Investigators tell us Roth was arrested after using another person's credit card at a hotel. A Kentucky firefighter who died in the line of duty last December will be honored next month. Captain Zach Clevenger was 30 years old when he died. His wife found him unconscious at their home after working a fire earlier that night. Clevenger worked for both the Estill and Montgomery County Fire Departments. His name, along with 79 other firefighters from across the country, will be added to the National Fallen Firefighters Memorial in Emmitsburg, Maryland. Several of Clevenger's co workers say they plan to attend the memorial service. Well, it's good to have you with us on WKYT. We're just getting started with all the latest here on your Wednesday. Still to come, two Texas high schoolers are going viral for an awesome homecoming surprise. The heartwarming story after the break. And that dome of higher pressure still sticking around, and that is pushing all the rain to the north of us and all the rain to the east of us. We really don't have a good chance anytime soon. We're going to talk about that heat, though. That's coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. So let's go zone by zone. Eastern areas were looking good. You can see that across I 64. That's right there in Moorhead. And then you go down south across 75 down into the Laurel County area. All looks well. Somerset coming in at 59 degrees. Danville 59 as well. Go up toward Frankfurt. Our northern zones, well, it's not too far north, but it's up there. And you're sitting roughly 60 degrees, and that goes for Lexington too. So there is some good looking air in store for us. This morning, this afternoon, it's another warm one. But just like yesterday afternoon and the day before and the day before that, it's not about the temperatures, it's about the humidity, and it's way down. 
it actually doesn't feel all that bad, and you're just not sweating your tail off as you walk outside with 87, 88, 89 degrees like we have had the past couple of months. So the past couple of months, moisture's been way up, not so much this time. We're heading toward fall. We're actually feeling like it in terms of the way it feels outside, not so much the temperatures. Here's the look as we roll across the region in towards your afternoon there on Thursday. Now, Thursday, yes, it's the first day of fall, but it's still going to feel like summer. Got a lot of warm air in place. It's just not moving that much. We stay dry again on that day and also on your Friday. So, nearing temperatures are right there around 90 degrees both Thursday and off towards your Friday. And it's dry each and every single day. So you see those temperatures 89 there in London. Jackson coming in at 89, going off toward Mount Sterling and Montgomery County, Bath County, Rowan County. All looks well. Bourbon, uh, good luck to you guys in Paris. Hope everything goes well this weekend because last weekend for the Secretariat Festival just didn't look that good. So hopefully, if you have any plans this weekend, hopefully it works out for you. High school football, it'll work out for everybody. Now, last weekend, high school football, most everybody stayed dry. Most everybody got the games in. But central zones and northern zones, it was really down toward the southwest to central up toward the north. We had two or three sales roll through, and that caused some problems. This weekend, you won't have any of that. Everybody will be dry as we head towards your Friday there for high school football. So it actually looks really, really nice. Seven day forecast the breakdown for you is 87 today, 88 for tomorrow. Now you say, and 90 on Friday. And you say, well, where is that in terms of? Normally, well, normally we're right around 76, 77 degrees. So we are well above average. We're 10 to maybe even 15 degrees in some spots above average now through your Friday. The front pulls in on Saturday. That'll give us some cloud cover, and that's about it. Just can't rule out the slightest. I put in a 10% chance rain, just the slightest chance at a sprinkler shower out of those clouds. Other than that, we stay dry. All the way throughout your work week, off into your weekend, and even into next week, guys. 79 on Sunday, which will feel great, but look toward Tuesday. It's 74 degrees. Now, let me tell you this: some particular models are showing 69 for a high. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Wouldn't that be great? Yes, I mean would. that's well below average. So we're going from up here to down here, and that would be nice. Well, you might want to say easy does it though. Here, yeah, yeah well, it's fall so, right don't, into don't winter. Cheering those cool temperatures on yeah. too much. There you go. <laughs> Micah, we appreciate it. 514 is our time. All right, this is a fantastic story. A kind gesture between friends goes viral after a Texas high schooler is named Homecoming King, only to turn his crown over to his friend. Love the story. Mm -hmm. Max Aiken was voted king, but he said his friend, K.L., who has cerebral palsy, is the most positive person he knows and was more deserving of the title. So after he received the honor during the homecoming halftime, Max surprised everyone by turning and passing his crown to his good friend, K.L. The crowd went wild. And so did the internet as people share this story. Mm -hmm. We were just saying, like, how proud his parents must be right yeah. now because no. that is such just the sweetest thing. I love that he did that. What a good move, huh? Yeah. If I 15, our time now on WKYT this morning. Great to have you along, and we have a lot more news coming up. Our top story shortly. And when we come back, we'll take a look at your money. Wells Fargo's CEO gets pressured to step down following a company scandal. And empty nesters are flying the coop themselves. I'm Marley Hall, and I'll have those stories and more coming up in your CBS Money Watch report. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Welcome back in. Time to rise and shine here on this Wednesday. Let's make it a good day. It's coming up on 519. Well, Wells Fargo CEO is getting pressured to step down following a company scandal. And empty nesters are flying the coop themselves. Marley Hall has the latest on your money. Lawmakers are calling for Wells Fargo CEO John Stumpf to step down. Regulators say the company created millions of fake bank accounts to meet aggressive sales goals and get bonuses. Stumpf told the Senate Banking Committee Tuesday the company will assist customers affected by the scandal. Stocks were stable as investors await the results of a two-day Federal Reserve meeting that wraps up today. The Dow gained nine points Tuesday. The Nasdaq added six. SeaWorld announced it will stop paying shareholders dividends after next month. The Orlando-based attraction has struggled with dwindling attendance and revenue as many people shy away from the idea of using animals for entertainment. SeaWorld says the money saved on dividends will be used to buy its own shares. 
Many empty nesters have travel on their mind. According to a British Airways survey, 40% of parents whose kids have gone off to college are planning their own kid-free vacation, also known as an empty nestcation. 40% also said they would dip into their savings guilt-free now that their children are out of the house. That's your Money Watch. For more, log on to CBSMoneyWatch.com. In New York, I'm Marley Hall. Well, Samsung says replacements of the Galaxy Note 7 will be rolled out today. Regulators recalled the smartphone last week after several reports of the Note 7 catching fire while charging. The fires were traced to a battery problem. Note 7 users can pick up free replacements from Samsung, their wireless carrier, or the store where they bought the phone. And a little bit later, we'll tell you about a, a fire involving a hoverboard up in northern Kentucky. And that as well must uh, have to do with those uh, batteries, you yeah. know, overheating. So uh, that's uh, an overnight story. We need to figure out these. Yeah, this, this battery issue sure needs yes. to be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Gotten under control. 521 on WKYT here on your Wednesday morning. Uh, there's still a lot more to come. Sports is on the way next. On the way in sports, it is all about quarterbacks. Drew Barker is sidelined. Steven Johnson should be your starter if things continue the way they are, but maybe even he needs a backup this weekend. You never know with the way things are going. We'll talk about it next in sports. We're in the upper 50s, lower 60s at this very moment. I'm meteorologist Micah Harris with your update. Outside 60 degrees right now in London. Going to Rockcastle County, we're looking just fine. Off into, say, Laurel, Jackson. Work your way up that 421 corridor and also uh, over toward West Liberty and Morgan County. And 460, that is. And things are looking pretty good over in eastern Kentucky. So I don't see much of an issue as you're traveling outside early this morning. Looks pretty good there for the kiddos heading out to the bus stop. This morning looks great. This afternoon, pretty nice. I mean, we're sitting there around 87. I know that sounds warm, but the humidity's down, so we're doing all all right, it's dry air in place, and as it looks pretty good. Now, go throughout the next few days, and temperatures will just get warmer and warmer each and every single day. So, this bus stop forecast will be pretty much the same, but it's just going to be warmer, and that's about it. So, no rain chances for us this morning for the kids out at the bus stop or you heading out to work. There's the slightest chance of rain there for the weekend. We're going to talk about that blasting cold front in your full forecast in just a few minutes. Let's see what's going on with sports. Quarterback Drew Barker is sidelined with a bad back. He sees a specialist today. So Steven Johnson has been taking first team snaps as the Cats get ready for South Carolina. Johnson came through with a big game Saturday. He replaced Barker after the opening series. The Juco transfer through for 310 yards and the Cats put up 62 points. Yesterday he said he was nervous coming into the game, but now preparing as the starter, well, it's not a lot different from getting ready as the backup. Um, not so much. Probably not. Uh, it probably feels just about the same. Uh, just trying to prepare like I've been preparing. I definitely had jitters early um, in that last game. Um, I know those first two incomplete passes were just big mistakes on my part, obviously. But um, I think I just settled down, uh, trusting the playmakers I have on, this, on the field and on my team. Um, like you said, settle in. As for a backup to Johnson, offensive coordinator Eddie Grant says freshman Gunnar Hoke out of Dublin, Ohio, and transfer Luke Wright, who came in from Cincinnati, they are getting ready. Right now, Gunnar's going right now and, and, and getting the backup uh, work. Uh, Luke is, uh, is ready to go, uh, has done a great job. He's, I think, uh, mentally especially, and, you know, it's really close between the two of them. And uh, so both of them got to be ready. Uh, just like uh, Landon Young was ready, just like Benny Snell was ready. Those two right now have to be ready to come in and play. We will see what happens this weekend as South Carolina comes to Commonwealth Stadium, a 7.30 kickoff on the SEC Network Saturday night. That is a look at sports. Have a great day.